Hello, everyone. My name is Henry Wang. I'm glad to share our latest work on quantum computing, Atomic, a quantum compiler for reconfigurable neutral item arrays. Neutral item quantum computing devices have a long history back to early 2000s. For example, 2-qubit device was built by NIST and UMD back to 2007. In the recent years, the advancement of them has been more than exciting. It only took four years to increase the number of qubits from tens to hundreds, even over 6,000 in recent works. Quantum error correction with neutral item was also successfully demonstrated. In neutral item device, qubits are implemented with items in the vacuum chamber as shown on the right. Various lasers are used to control the locations of the qubits and perform operations as on the left. Neutral item devices have multiple unique advantages. First, because qubits are it items, all qubits are identical and perfect. Second, compared to other technologies such as superconducting, neutral items have longer coherence time. Third, they have higher scalability. For example, 10,000 items can be fit in a one millimeter square area. Lastly, they also have flexible configurations such as changeable coupling map. Similar to multiple software layers in classical computing, it is critical to fill the software gap for neutral item devices to benefit from the fast hardware development and good physical characteristics. There has been several pioneering work in this domain developing compilers for fixed item arrays, but they cannot handle item movements. Some other pioneering work can handle both fixed and movable items, but, are, but not scalable to quantum programs with over 100 qubits. To fulfill the requirements of a scalable compiler for both fixed and movable items, we develop atomic compiler in this work. In the neutral item device we study, there are two kinds of item arrays. One is fixed array in blue, in which the items stay stationary in the whole computing process. Another kind is movable arrays in yellow and green, in which the items stay on the crossings of a grid and can be moved by an entire row or column. During the quantum circuit execution, we can move the rows and columns of the movable items uh, coherently. The reconfigurable locations provide us a large uh, flexibility on a qubit coupling map. As shown here, all the qubit pairs within a certain distance called radial radius can perform eligible two qubit gates. The locations can be moved multiple times during the program execution, resulting in a reconfigurable coupling map that is drastically different from the fixed coupling map in the superconducting devices. We call this device IPQA, field programmable qubit array, in analogy to IPGA device, because qubit mapping in this device is similar to the placement in, in IPGA, and item movement is similar to routing in IPGA. In atomic compiler, our goal is firstly providing a software framework to decide which items to use, schedule the movements and laser illuminations, and optimize for low two qubit overhead and high parallelism. We also want to provide insights and guidance for future device development by studying what kind of program is more suitable, the error sources and impact of different hardware settings. Atomic contains three compilation steps. Qubit array mapper decides which array to place a certain qubit. Qubit item mapper decides the specific item location inside each array. After determining the locations, High parallelism router schedules the item movements and laser illuminations. Let's discuss them one by one. If we take a careful look of the coupling map of the qubits in IPQA, we can find that two qubits can always be directly connected by item movements, as long as they are in different arrays, shown in different colors here. Therefore, the coupling map of IPQA forms a, co a complete multi parted graph. Since the overhead of performing item movements is smaller than adding swap gates, as we will discuss in the experiments, we prefer all two qubit gates to be performed directly between items in different arrays. Therefore, we need to carefully decide which array to place each qubit. For a given quantum circuits, we firstly construct the two qubit gate frequency graph. Each node here is a qubit and edges are two qubit gates. The weights on the edges indicate the number of two-qubit gates between qubit pairs. Then, according to the number of arrays, we perform the max k cut of the graph to find a partition that maximizes the cuts, thus maximizing the right two-qubit gates between the qubits. The max k cut result tells us the placement of the qubits to which arrays. 
For two qubit gates that are still within one array, we will add necessary swap gates. Then in the second step, the qubit add mapper will decide the specific location of each qubit according to two heuristics. For the fixed array, we propose the load balance mapping heuristic to pr prioritize the locations near the diagonal region of the array. Therefore, the number of qubits per row and column will be balanced. That can help increase the parison. Intuitively, consider the case that all items are on the diagonal region, then their locations can be freely changed because no other items are in the same row or column. For movable, movable arrays, we propose the alignment mapping heuristic in which the qubit pairs of high frequency qubit gates will be mapped to the same location in two arrays, which can also increase the parison. In the third step, the high parison router will help schedule the item movement and also laser illuminations according to the qubit circuit, quantum circuit. The process runs iteratively. In each iteration, Firstly, the algorithmically independent gates are selected in the front layer. And then Raman laser perpendicular to the item plane will be illuminated to perform one qubit gates. For two, two qubit gates in this, in this iteration, we can maximally perform four two qubit gates in this uh, in parallel, but that, can, that may violate the hardware constraints. Therefore, we need to perform some hardware constraint checking to find a subset of the algorithmically independent two qubit gates. Here we give two examples for hardware constraints. The first hardware constraint is that the compulsory two qubit gates, which means all qubit pairs within Rayburn radius must perform two qubit gates. In this example, the black lines indicate the three algorithmically parallelable two qubit gates. We need to move the items to make, make sure those two, three qubit pairs are close uh, enough. And then we illuminate a global river laser. Here we can see the three desired gates can be done all together. However, since we have to move items by an entire row and column, we also inevitably perform an unwanted two qubit gate. Therefore, on real hardware, the three gates cannot be done in parallel here. The second hardware constraint is that during the movements, the row and column orders of the move arrays must be preserved. In this example, there are two algorithmically parallelable two qubit gates. However, in order to make, uh, make those two pairs within readable radius, we have to move the rows and columns like this. That will, that will also swap row two and three, as well as, as, well as swap row two, uh, column two and three, which violates the order preserving constraint. Therefore, we add two qubit gates to a hardware parallelable two qubit gate side, one by one until the hardware constraints cannot be met. Then we can move the items accordingly and il illuminate the global river laser to execute the two qubit gates. Then we can go to the beginning and then continue with the next set of the independent gates. We repeat this process until finishing all the gates. And that is the step three of our atom atomic compiler. We comprehensively evaluate our compiler by con considering different sources of errors, in the, including one qubit gates, two qubit gates, movement errors, item, item transfer errors, etc. For movable errors, we model the heating, cooling overhead, item loss, the additional the coherence error due to the longer coherent, uh, execution time incurred by the movements. Firstly, we show the comparis comparison with the latest server-based compiler. Firstly, for the small and solvable circuits for the uh, solver compiler, Atomic achieves on average 95.7 of the overall fidelity. Meanwhile, Atomic achieves significant speed up up to 24,000 X, and speed up is increasingly significant for larger quantum circuit. Second, solver cannot find solutions, while at Atomic can find out solutions for a circuit with over 1,000 qubits in around four minutes of compilation time. The insight is that Atomic avoid exponential cost over and achieves linear scaling of the runtime. We then compare FEQA with the fixed item arrays, average over uh, 17 representative benchmarks. Atomic achieves on average 3.2x reduction on circuit depth, 3.5x reduction on qubit gate count, and also 5.2x uh, of program, uh, program fidelity improvements. The source of improvements is mainly from FQA's ability to leverage 
item physical movements instead of ex uh, executing extensive swap gates to perform long range TQP gates. We also study the sources of errors under different hardware settings. Here we show an important hardware setting, which is the time of the movement, which inversely correlates to movement speed. Different colors indicate the contributions of in infidelity from different sources. Larger, areas mean, uh, larger area means larger inf infidelity. When time per move is very small, indicating very fast speed of the item, the item loss error is dominating because the item vibration is very strong under fast movement. Then we can also zoom in to have a look at other eye resources. When the time per move is very small and speed is high, the heating and cooling in infidelity is very large. When time per move increases, the heating overhead reduces, but the overall runtime increases, which bring large decoherence errors. This interesting trade-off leads to a sweet spot of the movement speed of around 300, uh, 300 microseconds per move that also align with the real device experiment settings in Harvard Lukens group. In conclusion, we propose Atomic, a software stack for IPQA devices. It fills the blank of this uh, scalable comp compilation for this emerging uh, architecture. It also achieves significant speed up uh, the solver-based method and scale to thousands of the qubits. Also, it has 3.5x qubit gate reduction to the fixed item arrays. Moreover, the analysis result from our compiler also provide important guidance for hardware configurations and future device development. We also open source our framework at this link, which can generate uh, uh, animations on the right to help understand the compilation intuitively. Welcome to play with it. Thanks for your attention.